God wants you to experience His victory. Do you believe God can give you victory? Gary, Susan, thank you so much for being here today. This is very exciting for me to, to be, be talking with you. As, as you know, and, and I'll say this for those who may be new to this project, whether they're, whether they're listening to it or watching it, our theme as a church this year, our, our vision is a year of victory, 2023, a year of victory. Our pastor shared the message a few weeks back at the beginning of the year about that, and then we've been going through a sermon series in 1 Corinthians uh, to help us understand that a little bit better. And, and so this project is all about finding and sharing those victory stories. And so for people who don't know you, take a minute and just introduce yourselves. Well, I'm Susan Moss. Uh, this is my son. I have a daughter uh, and three grandchildren. About to have a great grandchild soon. Married to Darnell Moss. Been at Silverdale. I can't remember how many years. Known you 10 years. 10 years. So I've probably been at Silverdale maybe 20 years. I'm not sure. But I am a retired ex-professional um, educator, and by God's grace, I'm his child. That's about it for me. Um, this is my wonderful mother, um, Miss Susan. My name's Gary Davis. Obviously, um, I, too, um, am married. I've been married for 22 years this year. Um, three kids, Gary, Anaya, Dominique. Um, I work for a company that does anode materials for this new EV battery section of life we're going into, and um, just blessed to be here. I've been a member of Silverdale about the same length of time. Not as active, I'm ashamed to say, but been here about the same amount of time as my mom. Yeah, so you say that, but that's really a part of your story about what God has been doing to to create victory in your life. So, so share a little bit about that. Sure. Um, I first will give you the piece on the chaos because the, the sermon is victory in chaos. And so um, I've had many chaotic situations in my life, but the one that I'm going to highlight, which has propelled me to the path that I feel like God has put me on, is um, in November of 2021, my young brother died of a drug overdose. And as chaotic as that was, I can remember... Um, receiving a phone call from my mom and not even being able to make out what she was trying to say. So I knew it was something um, pretty bad. And um, obviously I wanted to, um, I guess initially I wanted to just sink in my sorrow because of the pain I heard through my mom, but I realized very quickly that I had to be some source of strength, physical strength um, on earth, that is, um, for my mom and my family. And so um, that was a very chaotic situation for me. Uh, fast forward a little bit, I never forget Pastor Tony did my little brother's eulogy. And for the rest of my life, I never forget, he said that um, my little brother had lived 14,582 days. And when you hear that number, you think, man, that's a long time. But then when you see a deceased loved one at the age of 39, you realize that's not a lot of time. And so hearing that eulogy, um, I asked God, I was like, God, I don't know how much time you're going to give me. I had already lived past 14,582 days and had not been, in my opinion, effective for the Lord. And I wanted to use whatever time God was going to give me left to be as effective as I could I didn't know what that path would entail at that time, but I knew I was going to devote the rest of the time that God was giving me to not only proving myself to God, but as also outreach, reaching out to young people and trying to deter them from the path that I had a front row seat that my little brother had kind of went through in his life. So you and I have talked about this, um, you know, because, you know, I, I, my brother committed suicide, right. uh, my younger brother, 20 years ago. And so we have that in common. And what the Lord did in, in you is similar to what the Lord did in me. Our, our circumstances are a little bit different. The details are a little bit different, but I can relate. I can relate. I know God didn't do that in order to change you, 
but God used that Absolutely. to impact you. And I can't even imagine what that was like for you, Miss Susan. Um, but I imagine the joy of seeing Absolutely. your son Absolutely. chase after Jesus as a result Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. You're so, right. so, all right. So today, how is that impacting your life today? And where are you seeing God change and work in you and victory happen as a result of that? I am eternally grateful to God for that happening. Um, I will say this before I go into where I am currently. Um, my brother was a brilliant minded young man. And if you would have told me that he wasn't going to survive this situation in his life, I would have told you you're incorrect. It's because how brilliant he was. And that was a turning point for me as well. But um, thankful to God alone. Um, we have launched a nonprofit organization in his honor. His name was Charles DeVal Sledge, and the name of our nonprofit organization is Community Development and Services, which is his initials. Uh, God has allowed us to. I have, didn't realize that. Yes, I didn't sir. put that together. Now it's. You makes, slow, Michael. You slow. It's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and so God has also allowed us to have, because he was such a brilliant man got a full scholarship to high school, full scholarship to college. God has allowed us to have two award ceremonies at uh, Woodmore Elementary where we're currently doing our mentorship program in honor of him, which is Charles DeVal um, Scholar Awards, wow. where we uh, award um, the top female and male students in two fifth grade classes. And in this last nine weeks, we were able to do two fifth grade classes as well as three fourth grade classes. So. Um, excited about that. That's what we're doing currently. Um, it also was a relief for me to hear my mother say that this was a source of healing for her, mm. um, which is putting, I remember one time Pastor Tony says, a lot of situations in life, you either come with a fire extinguisher or a gas can. And that was a gas can for my fire. So it just really ignited me. And so I'm excited about what God has us going the things he has allowed us to accomplish in such a short amount of time. Um, we've had several successful fundraisers. We have an active mentorship in Woodmore Elementary. We're working on connecting with Dalewood Middle School as we speak. And so that's my motivation. And at some point, God willing, I will do this full time. And that's, that's, that's my goal. I love that. Making a difference in the next generation. I mean, you know that I'm real passionate about that. Absolutely. And uh, that's exciting to me. And, 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 and God loves that. Amen. God loves that. So Amen. thank I'd like you. to add one more thing. Yeah, please do. And then I, I'm going to pass it to the uh, main attraction. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Crazy. I want to say that um, our mentorship is I have our shirt on today. It's Act Like Men, which is found it in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, where God instructs us to stand firm, be watchful, be strong, act like men, and operate in love. And those are our um, subjects or our objectives that we break down for the curriculum. We do have to tiptoe around certain spiritual things in the school, but anybody who knows understands that those commands that come from that verse is very scripture and spiritual base. I love it. And so I'm excited about uh, creating a curriculum. I've never written one before. I think uh, I may have a future in writing curriculums <laughs> at some point, but I just wanted to say that. So even the curriculum that we created is based off 1 Corinthians 16, 13, which is not just men, but us all, we should act like men. Yes. I love that. I love that. Maybe one day in the not too distant future, we'll do a, another feature on that and kind of... Absolutely. Put that, put that together. That would be a fun project. So main attraction, <laughs> as, as your son said. Tell us about you. Know, tell us about you. Tell us about where, where you're seeing God move and, and just share your story. Well, again, I'm, I'm delighted, Michael. So honored to be here, especially with my son. When you, when you brought this to me a while back, um, and this being Black History Month, victories and connecting it historically, oh, my mind just went into fifth gear. And I thought about how, um, how God worked historically. The victories that we have don't just start the morning we wake up. 
You know, they happen in God's sovereignty over time through history. Um, Ruth, for instance, a Moabite, God, in his sovereignty, left, moved her from there, that heathenous, idolatrous nation, and grafted her into the Israelite nation. And David, you know, God was already working and granting victory to David through the Moabite. He works through history. So I thought about me. All right, Father, God, help me to see some of my victories that you started a while back. Um, and I thought about my grandparents, my both grandfathers, uh, the victories that he gave me today that started with them. My, um, my maternal grandfather uh, was what we call high yellow. I mean, his mother was white. Her name was Susan. I'm named for her. Okay. And so he was light complected enough that he could have passed, could have pretended that he was white, but he chose not to go that route. And at that time, the racial discrimination, the oppression, the, the difficulty of a black man, much less a half black man trying to make it, the odds were against him, but he chose to not pass. He chose to work as many jobs as he needed to to provide for his family. Well, that helped me have victory right now, you know. So um, as I think about this being Black History Month, I can just think about my own history and how the victories that God has given me started way back before I was even born. My um, paternal grandfather, is my giant in the faith, Reverend Henry Sledge. Um, when I was little, and I really didn't understand what salvation was, but I could look at his life. I could listen to his voice, and I knew then, I don't know what it is about Papa, but whatever it is, I need it. So even then, God was working to give me victory, just a little girl looking at Reverend Henry Sledge. Mm. Um, my grandfather, uh, again, they came up at a time when it was quite difficult. Not that we have arrived yet. We, things are better, absolutely. But back then it was like hundreds of times worse. And Papa owned acres and acres of land in white America. I'm thinking, how did he do that, you know? But the strength, the motivation, the determination, to excel, to achieve, to have, that God gave him was victory for me. And I've just thought about how in our heritage, I mean, I, I relish the fact of people like Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and uh, Sojourner Truth. I mean, Martin Luther King, I, I relish the thought of how they fought against all odds to win some great victories for us. But I have to say that, and I honor, I do, I honor it. But outside of Jesus and really knowing him as your savior, all of that, as great as it is, it's a puff of smoke. You know, it'll burn up. So um, I have many victories. I have so much victory, most, first and foremost in Christ. But then he's also done a lot in my personal history, in my black history. And I just feel like I'm the most blessed woman on the planet because I have so much victory on so many levels that go so far back and still permeate in my life richly, strongly right now. I love that. I love that. I love that you have that that foundation mm -hmm. you know what first corinthians 3 talks about that foundation which is jesus christ amen you know that that is the our foundation amen. and then to be able to build upon that as as your grandfathers as you share did in your life and the impact that that has had thank you for sharing you for the honor to be here and to do that i want to add one thing if i can how dare i not mention this lady beside me she has been such a spiritual lighthouse to me in my life 
um, without her and her praying friends, I don't think I would have been here physically, much less being able to enjoy the victory that I have in Jesus, just based upon my life and the trajectory of my life when I was young, um, I would have never guessed that I would be sitting here talking about the victory in Jesus. And I wouldn't without having a God-fearing spiritual leader that I have right here beside me. So she's definitely been this victory lighthouse in my life for sure. I got to add that before we conclude. To God be all glory. To God be the glory. Glory.